What is up, everyone? Welcome back. I'm Nick, and we're about one third done with the Swift UI Bootcamp. So I hope this series so far is not boring you. Uh, I know learning to code can be very stressful, and watching YouTube tutorials can be even more boring. So I'm trying to keep these light and fun and easy for you. But definitely let me know how you guys feel in the comments. If there's anything that I've been confusing about, if there's anything that I could do better, I would love to hear your feedback. So with that said, let's get into this video. And today we're talking about for each statement. So for each statements are basically just loops in Swift UI. So we use them anytime we want to repeat a UI element on the screen. So for example, let's pretend like we wanted to put 10 circles on the screen. Well, we could type out circle 10 different times and that would work, but a better way to do it is to add one for each statement and tell that for each statement to loop 10 times on a circle. So this way we get the same end result, but our code is much more efficient. So for each statements are not only easy to use, but they're also super powerful because when we have complex apps and we have large data sets, like maybe we have a hundred different items in our data set, well, you would never wanna type out the same thing a hundred times. You'd rather type it once and create a for each statement to loop on that data. So super helpful, super handy. Let's get into it. All right, this is gonna be a fun and easy one. I'm back in our Xcode project. Let's create a new file for this video one more time. Right click the navigator, create a new file, and it's going to be a Swift UI view. We're going to be doing loop statements, which are called for each in Swift UI. So let's call this for each bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once we're inside, let's click resume on the canvas and let's get coding. So in some previous videos, we learned about H stacks and V stacks, and we also learned about how to put data variables outside of the body. And we're going to use both of those in this video. Let's start by creating a V stack, open the brackets and inside this V stack, let's add some text. Let's write uh, one and let's add another text and this one will be two. And let's add another text and this one will be three. So in Swift UI, if we wanted to put a bunch of items in our V stack, we could type it out like this one, two, three, and so on and so forth. But what if we had a situation like an Instagram feed where we had a ton of data, there might be a hundred items in here. We might want to have a hundred different texts. Well, as developers, we hate retyping code and typing this a hundred times would get very, very annoying. So in Swift UI, what we could do instead is do a for each loop. So we can loop on some logic a certain number of times and then put those into our app. So let's delete these three texts. Let's type for each. When we open the parentheses, we're going to use first this data with a range and an integer in there. That means that range is basically asking for a specific number of loops that we want it to go through. So let's hit enter on that. And for this range, we're going to do zero dot dot less than 10. So it's going to go from zero to less than 10. So nine. So from zero to nine is 10 loops, if that makes sense. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is 10 loops. And then for the content, let's hit enter on this. And I actually don't like this completion here. I wish they wouldn't give this all to us. So let's delete this section of code here and just write index. So our code should look like for each zero less than 10 brackets index in. And now for each of these loops, for all 10 loops, this code is going to execute. So if we put in text, high, we'll now get 10 texts and they're in a vertical alignment because this is in a V stack. So we're looping 10 times around this high and each of these loops has an index An index is just the loop number that it's on. So again, we're starting at zero and we're going to less than 10, which is nine. So in this text high, 
I'm going to put a colon and then I want to put this index variable into the string. And we learned in the last video that we can do that by doing a forward slash, open and close the parentheses, and then here I can reference a variable, and I'm going to reference this index. So we'll type index, and now you can see all of the loops in our preview. So loop one, the first loop has an index of zero, because we're going from zero to less than 10, which is nine and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the last one is 9. But of course, there are 10 loops. So this is super useful in our code because when we start getting larger data sets, we're going to want to loop through things. We're not going to want to retype code hundreds of times. And in this for each section, we could also add any kind of view we want. We can do a circle, and let's give it a frame of maybe uh, 30 by 30 and we don't need the alignment so now you can see we have our 10 circles in going down and maybe let's embed this circle into an H stack so I'm going to command click on the circle embed in H stack again you could have typed out H stack with the brackets and on the right of the circle let's add a text and let's put this text saying uh, index is colon and then forward slash, open and close the parentheses, and inside this parentheses, let's reference the index. So again, you can see we can put anything we want into this for each. We have a H stack here now with a circle and a text, and it's looping through. So super useful. In here, you can also put your own views. So when we have custom views, custom rows, custom buttons, and we can always loop through with different data. I want to take this one step further for you guys just to give you an example of how we can use it with real data. So outside the body here, let's create a data set. And let's say let data of type, and it's going to be an array of strings. So I'm going to use the brackets to signal an array. Then I'll type string, and I'll close the brackets, and I'll set this equal to an empty array. So I'm just going to use the brackets open and closed to make this an empty array. And we know a string is just text, so if we did let my string of type string equals hello, you know that my string is just hello. An array of string is just a bunch of strings all together in one set. So again, if I deleted this for each and I just added a text and I put my string and I reference this variable, we can now see that this text and when I click resume on the canvas, we'll just say hello. And that's because it's one string. But if I had a data with a whole bunch of strings, I could then loop on it. And so let's create a for each to loop on this data. So I'll get rid of this text here. We'll do for each. And this time we're going to use this first completion that has data and content. So there's this range which we just used with a specific number. There's the default data one, which we're going to use now. And more complex, there's one with a special ID. This one we're going to use a lot in actual apps, but we're going to get into using IDs later. That's a little more advanced. But for right now, let's just use this first one with data and content. Hit enter. And now what is our data? Our data is going to be this, of course, data. And we need to loop on the indexes of the array. So we're going to call data indices and then in the content let's hit enter and again I don't like this completion that they give us let's put here index and now this is going to loop on all the items in this data and for each item let's put a text new item and we'll put a colon and then we'll put the index so we'll do forward slash open close parentheses and we will put in the index so now our code is compiling, but we don't see anything on the screen. And that's because this is an empty data set. We don't have any data in this, in this bracket. So let's add some data strings. We can do uh, hi, we'll put, this is a first string. And then we'll do a comma for another string. We'll do hello, comma, hey everyone. And let's just leave it as these three, these three strings. Now when we click resume on the canvas, the for each is going to loop through all of the indexes on the data set. And again, the index 
is basically just the count or the number in the data. So the first index is zero. So you can see in the preview, we have new item colon zero for the first index, one and two. And that's, and we have these three loops here because there are three items in the data set. Now, of course, we want to use this actual data. We don't want this new item here. So instead of referencing this new item, let's reference this data and this variable. So again, let's delete new item. I'm going to use a forward slash open and close parentheses. And we're going to reference the data array, which is data. And then when you have an array, if you want to reference a specific point in the array, all we need to do is add the index. So for this data here, which is the whole array, we'll open and close the brackets. And in this brackets, we can tell it which index we want to do. So if we did the first index, which is zero, we'll see that we now have high, which is our first index three times. But of course, we're doing a for each loop and we get the index on each loop. So we can put that index into here. And now we are looping through our data and our data is dynamic. So each of these texts has a different title. Hi, hello, hi everyone, and a different index. Now in a real app, you probably wouldn't actually put the index number in here. I'm just doing that to show you guys, but this is very powerful. And as you get more complex apps, you could do data arrays, not just of strings, you could do colors, you could do more complex data as well. Uh, but this is basically a very fast and efficient way to put large data sets onto your screen. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you're following along, I highly recommend going and making your own views using VStacks, using HStacks, and just looping on some very sample test data or indexes to get a good feel on how these for each loops work. Because we're going to use them a lot in, in some of the videos to come as well as when you actually make your apps. And while you're testing, you might notice that if you did a for each loop that had maybe a very big index, like zero to less than a hundred, and you had content in here like this with maybe a circle and the frame, we can do a height of 50. You'll probably notice that these are going off the screen, but do not worry because in the next video, we're going to learn about scroll views. And scroll views will let us actually scroll on the data so that when we have for each and large data sets, we'll actually be able to scroll up and down instead of getting cut off like you see here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the content, if you're learning something from the videos. And hit that like button if you thought this one was useful. Thanks again, and I will see you guys in the next video.